Well, hello, this is Adam. Welcome to my Rare Classic Car Channel here again from the tranquil setting as opposed to the porch. Hopefully you all enjoy this. And today I wanted to talk about one of the worst transmissions of all time, that being the Turbo Hydromatic 440 T4. This is the transmission where arguably the term chuggle was invented for it, which I'll explain in a minute. But just to set the stage here, this was GM's first full-size front-wheel drive transmission that went into the C cars, the DeVille, the Electra, the 98, the H cars, which would have been in 1986, the Olds 88, the Buick LeSabre, and 87, the Pontiac Bonneville. And the vehicle programs were delayed by about a year and a half just because of the transmission and issues that they were having with the transmission. That's how bad these things performed on the durability cycles at the proving ground back in the day. And unfortunately, it took GM a number of years to really get this transmission right. I would say, so it, it was released in early 84, like April of 1984, and those are the worst. So the C bodies that came out in early 1984 have the weakest transmission. I would say by 87, certainly by 88, it took a number of model years obviously, they became pretty durable. And this actually evolved into the 4T60E, which was a pretty durable transmission for, as far as front wheel drive, four speed automatics go. But it certainly started life as something less than stellar. I actually had an 85 DeVille that had this transmission. I've talked about it in a previous video, but more about the engine in that car. So that car had two issues wrong. It had a soft camshaft and a flat camshaft that I had to replace. I paid $800 for the car, by the way, and it only had 25,000 miles and had a flat camshaft, in part because the antifreeze had leaked into the oil and chewed some of the engine internals up. But I got that fixed. I was really excited. And then I go to drive the vehicle after it's all fixed put it in gear and I hear this transmission whine, the torque converter whine. And interestingly, I ch tried everything. I changed the fluid, changed the filter multiple times, didn't make any difference, stayed the same noise level. I drove that car with that transmission whine for at least 70,000 miles, never got any better, never got any worse, it just was part of the character. But this transmission is one that if you have one of those cars from that era, let's say 85 to certainly 85, 86, maybe even 87 a bit, GM full-size front-wheel drive cars, just be gentle with them. Don't hot rod them. You will have problems. Make sure you change the fluid. Make sure you change the filter regularly. Make sure it stays bright red. If you do that, you'll generally be okay. But let's talk about one interesting feature of this transmission, which is it locked up went into lockup in third gear, not fourth gear. So you'd have the one to two shift, the two to three shift. Then as it's executing the two, three shift right after that, the torque converter would lock up and then it would shift into overdrive and relock basically. So a lot of these transmissions experienced chuggle one of my favorite terms that comes from the automotive space. And what does that mean? It basically means that you can feel the engine power pulses coming through the drive line. And for whatever reason, the torque converter clutches on these and the torque converters, when they would lock up, it tended to be the case that you could feel, you could feel the drive line shudder a bit. It was not an overly smooth lockup. These transmissions really didn't do much smoothly. They didn't upshift smoothly, they didn't downshift smoothly, especially the 2-1 downshift was pretty clunky. But that chuggle that you would sometimes get was emblematic of the transmission. And so it's funny, my Olds, I have an 86 Olds 98 that I bought from somebody and I asked him, well, how does it run and drive? And he said, oh, it runs, you know, runs and drives pretty good. The motor shakes a little bit sometimes. I can't quite figure out what that is. And the transmission does some funny things every once in a while. I drove the car and I thought, wow, this is the best driving 86 and Olds 98 that I've ever driven. It's just the inherently imbalanced nature of the 90 degree V6 in those cars, pre-balance shaft, pre-3800, 3.8 liter though, coupled with this transmission that was 
a little bit funky. The TV cable is out of adjustment. These do have a TV cable to control shift points as well as a modulator valve to control the shift harshness. Uh, but in any event, I thought that the car, the car actually drove quite well. So that is one issue, the torque converter clutch and how it locks up and the chuggle, the results. And it's kind of interesting because you almost think that GM knew this was an issue because Cadillac did an exclusive thing, which was they had a viscous converter clutch as opposed to the standard torque converter. And the idea there was you have this viscous fluid that can absorb some of that chuggle when the uh, lockup is occurring. And having owned a number of 85, I've owned two 1985 Cadillac DeVilles, I've owned tons of C-body cars, and owning the conventional C-body, whether it was, I've owned uh, Buick Electras, Olds 98s, Olds 88s, the Cadillac did actually make a difference. It was a discernible difference. The lockup was smoother, but that didn't help the upshift, downshift cadence and the smoothness of the rest of the transmissions operation but it did take away the chuggle in those instances. And there's actually a section in the factory service manual entitled, for diagnosis, entitled chuggle. I don't know where that term originated. Uh, it's obviously some sort of a portmanteau of, of a couple words that have been s squeezed together, chugging and, I don't know, uggle. <laughs> so if you do get one of these vehicles, I would say in terms of transmission, they are not strong. They're relatively weak. They tend to have that, you can feel those power pulses when the transmission locks up. Tend to have two to one downshift bumps, as they were called. So you can feel the downshifts. Uh, if you take your foot off the gas pretty rapidly when the transmission is locked up, you'll feel the, the disengagement on, the, uh, on a lot of them. Or if you have your foot on the gas, you can also release the torque converter uh, or lock up by depressing the brake slightly. The brake switch also will disengage that. I think that that was because when Ford came out with the AOD transmission that also had a lockup, it was lampooned at the time because if you jammed on the brake and you locked the rear wheels, it would stall the car. Because the car was in lockup, if you lock the wheels, it's, the wheels are connected to the engine. And I think that was a result of it. So any of these cars of the era tend to, if you depress the brake slightly, they have a brake switch where the torque converter will release. Although that wasn't true for all of them. The Chryslers, the torque flights don't do that. The GMs do though, and the subsequent Fords after that early AOD introduction, I think did as well. So challenging torque converter clutch lockups, not smooth shifting, bad two to one downshift bumps, sometimes torque converter winds, not a great piece of machinery, but so it goes. Hope you enjoyed this brief discussion of the 440T4 and you learned a little bit, namely, you can now talk, talk to all your friends and family about Chuggle. Take care.